Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today we're going to be playing a Scoia'tael Harmony list that was made by Shin Miri, and this is going to be utilizing the new Crimson Curse leader, Dana Medaba. Medaba. Med I don't, you know what, I'm not even going to try. It's probably like Meve or some, I don't know. I'm not even going to try. It's not a word. Anyway, Dana, the way she works is you play a Squirtle card from your deck, and the provision value of that deck is based on the number of unique primary categories among the cards in your deck. So, for example, this card is a Trent. This card is a Gnome. This card is nature. This card is a dragon. These are all different categories. And this deck actually has 10 different primary categories, which means you can use this leader to play any of the cards in your deck, except for the Great Oak, which is 13 provisions. Great Oak, play him, uh, damage an enemy. I mean, it might be a girl oak, I don't know. Damage an enemy unit by the number of cards to the left of Great Oak, then boost self by the number of cards to the right of Great Oak. So. You want to play this once you've filled up a row. This is a really nice late game finisher. It's worth eight points of value in and of itself. So, you know, pretty good, pretty good. Then we have Barnabas Beckenbauer, who is a gnome. You use him to boost an allied elf, dwarf and dryad unit by two. So once you have those on the board, this is actually a 12 point value card, which is pretty good, but you need to have an elf, a dwarf and dryad. Uh, so it kind of ties in really nicely to this whole different unique categories thing which is pretty awesome. We have Water of Broccolon. Spawn and summon a Dryad Fledgling to an allied row. If you control a Dryad, spawn two Dryad Fledglings and summon them to the row. And these have Harmony, and Harmony allows you to boost off by one whenever you play a Squirtle unit with a unique primary category. So it's pretty good if you have lots of one-of units, because as you play them, you're going to be boosting up these Dryad Fledglings. And you can target draw Waters of Broccolon with Foul. Foul, play a nature card from your deck. So we can utilize her to target draw the waters of Broccolon, and she is a dryad herself, so she then guarantees you get two uh, dryad fledglings. So really nice little synergy there. On top of that, the other nature card we have in the deck is Dryad's Crest, which is one of these, uh, and that's just in case we happen to draw, you know, Falv, Falv, and oh my god, the names in Squirtel just just it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If we happen to draw uh, waters of Broccolon, then we can always target draw Dryad's Crest, giving an allied unit vitality for six turns. If you control a dryad, purify the allied first. So Vitality means that you boost by one point at the end of every turn, and Purify removes all statuses, okay? Then we have Saskia, who is a dragon. Order, damage an enemy unit by two. Cooldown four. If you have an Elf, Dwarf, or Dryad in your hand, decrease the cooldown by one. So you could have all three of those, in which case this is going to be dealing two damage every turn, which is pretty powerful. Milen is an Elf. We can use her to deal four damage to one unit, or one damage to four units, depending on where we place her. Then we have Moren, damage an enemy by two, or we can lock. So again, another Dryad, uh, which is useful for the Water of Broccolon. We have the Trent Boar. Uh, melee, move Trent Boar to the other row and heal it. And then on range, you can order it to move to the front row and damage an enemy by two. So this moves back and forth between the rows. And it's kind of useful also because Great Oak requires you to stack one row. So when you want to play Oak, you can make sure you move the Boar onto the row with the most units. We have Sursa. She again has that harmony tag, so we want to be playing her early. Damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow boost a unit in your hand by two. Target for boosting is typically Sheldon Skaggs. Damage an enemy unit by this unit's power. So the more power he has, the more damage we can deal. We have an extra lock here in Kieran, as well as another elf. And then we have Milva, who we want to play early. Boost off by one whenever you play a Squirtel unit, and she's immune. So pretty nice. Then we have a crushing trap. After two allied turns on turn end, damage all enemy units on the row with the most units by two. This is just pretty useful. You can always flip it early if you need the points, but it's pretty nice in a long round. Uh, it's, a, it's a good little tech card. A couple of panthers in here. Damage a non squirtel enemy unit by three. A little bit tricky in the mirror, but other than that, pretty good. Mahakam volunteers. Remember you need a dwarf on the row. If there is a dwarf on the row, you can thin these out of your deck. Uh, so... Just remember that you have that kind of requirement. These are a little bit trickier than, say, things like the Wild Hunt Riders, because, you know, they have a bit more of a niche requirement. Freehead Dragoons we can use to move units, which means we can stack uh, units for our Crushing Trap. Alternatively, if a unit has an effect that only triggers if it's on the melee row, you could use it to deny that effect by moving it to a different row. Walk a Healer in here, we can use to boost an ally by two or heal an ally by four. Dwarven Agitators are going to boost the Dwarf in our hand by two, hopefully on Sheldon Skaggs. And then the Dwarven Skirmishers damage an enemy by three if it survives boost off by one. So that is the deck. And yeah, I think it's a pretty fun deck to play. Like I said, it was made by Shin Miri. Um, he's a pretty good deck builder. He knows his stuff. And with the recent monsters nerf, I feel like this deck is yeah, in a pretty good spot. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into a game. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you do hit that like button.
Black to an Emarva. Okay, so we have a leader mirror, which means Panther's not going to be so good. Also, if we have four, then water of Brockland is bad, but because we don't have her, we can, in fact, hold on to that. So let's get rid of the Panther. And I'm also going to get rid of the Crushing Trap. I think it's a bit more useful in a later round. So that will be the Mulligans. And look at that synchronized arm flailing. And uh, this opponent actually opting to play the Dryad Fledglings. And we could utilize this to boost, but actually I think, like... Oh, we can't reach it. I was going to say we could use this to kill this because it's kind of a pain, but in, in the situation that we're in, it's kind of slightly awkward. We do want to find something that we can uh, kill by two, by the way, so that's also important there. But for now, I think what we'll do is we're just going to play this on the melee row uh, and kill Some the dried fledgling. I think being able to deny that, pretty useful. I know that we lost one point of value, but that's going to be getting stronger and stronger with every turn, which we don't <laughs> really want. So, again, slightly... Slightly problematic. Just as we do. Okay, so let's play Sasuke, I think. We've got the cards that we need in our hand. We need an elf, a dwarf, and a dryad. There's a dwarf. There's a dryad. There's an elf. So if she's going to be running these as engines, then what we're going to be doing is shutting them down. So I kneel before no one. there we go. And we can also utilize this to get something to two points, which would allow us to then play uh, Sarissa. Um, although we can also target Valve there, which is also an option. So we'll see how this works out. Follow me this way. And, ooh, shooting her. That's a nice play. That's a nice play. I don't think we have options to heal her, unfortunately. I mean, we could actually target draw the elf with Dana, but I think it's a bit of a waste of her ability. Uh, so let's shoot one of these dryads for now. And then we will utilize Sursa here to play her. And Sisters! kill one of those. Me! And then we can boost Sheldon's gags there. Get a little bit of value going forward. And then we'll end our turn. If they kill Saskia, they kill Saskia, you know. It's just kind of one of those things. And we can also use the use the Dwarven Agitator to boost Sheldon, which I think is pretty nice. I'm not overly concerned about this. Remember to put this guy in the range row, by we'll the way. It's something I have done. So many times. You can see every time I play tag, my, my Dryad is also boosting. So this kind of negates the fact that her fledgling is boosting because we have one too. So that's pretty good. We can also then thin our Mahakam volunteers, which is another nice little play. So we're likely to do that next. We do have a Dryad, so we could play Water of Broccoli on here uh, and get a couple more on the board, which isn't too bad. It's maybe worth considering. Depends how long we think this round is going to go. If we think she's going to play quick, then we shouldn't. And if we think she's going to play slow, then we should. Death to all dwarf. And I think... I think I do want to play this this round. I mean, we can still play four for other cards. And despite the fact that she's played this, it looks like she wants to kind of push this round. In which case, this would be a pretty good play. No! Let the dough live! I mean, we're still behind, but we can catch her with one card. And because we went second, it's not really an issue. We also do have a big 14-point, potentially, Sheldon Skaggs, which is nice. So let's see what she decides to do here. She hasn't used her tactical advantage, which means that I think she intends to kind of continue playing. So we could potentially really take, you know, or well, push this round. But I do want to thin these volunteers before I start to really make tempo plays but we do have the option of the oak and Sheldon here as as big plays although they're also really good finishers you know finish him oh people who play slow man people who play slow and there's the pass so we're gonna just in the volunteers now we'll put Mahakam boots to imperial arses and that will do I mean I think that was a good round. I'm happy with how that one turned out. We have the last play, or the last say, which can be kind of nice. Uh, let's see what we draw into. This is good for a long round. This is good for Sheldon. We probably don't need this many dwarves. And that's a fine, uh, fine alternative. We could get rid of the skirmisher. Eh, let's, let's do it. This is, this is all good. We'll just pass here. We have exactly seven cards. We're going to have a ten card final round. We want to find kind of engines, and we can target draw Barnabas should we need to. And you see there, volunteers don't thin unless you have a dwarf. So she's 
kind of got the problem that she can draw into a three-point card, which isn't so good. Although, arguably, she can mulligan it. Got to be a little bit cautious here with the mulligan because Valve, she's going to be pulling that Vitality card, but I don't want those, you know, can only target Square Tail units. That's just not good for me. Um, so mulliganing those, I think, is correct. We can pull Barnabas or Kieran, should we want, with our leader. So I would say that the state of the hand here is actually really, really good. What you got? There's a trap. So... Is it likely to kill the card that I play? If it's likely to kill the card that I play, then we should play something poor. Which would be this. So I think we play this first. Coexistence, my ass! And actually just turned into a Trent. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I'm not 100% sure on all the new... All the new cards. So phone. this was fine. We'll play Milva next. We actually do want to kill this, but if it gets bigger, we can Sheldon it. I'll get it the alternative is we can lock it. Um, we play this on the range row. Or we can kill it with the Great Oak. Okay, I think we probably want to lock this. So this goes on the range row. And we'll just do that. End our turn. Just deny one of our engines. And we got to play our own boar. And ideally, you want to play this on the range row because then the turn after, you can move it and, you know, it'll go across, which is pretty good. So if we play this here, then on the next turn, we can move it to here and deal damage, which, like I say, I think is pretty good. So not a bad play. So he's poisoned. We can heal him, though, if we play this on the range row. Um, which I like. I like that. So, let's kill the harmony unit. So we move this. Whoop. We can do that. Play her here. We ought to help one or the other. Heal this a little bit. And end our turn. We could have maybe waited, but I think if I waited, she maybe would have killed the boar. You know, if you get it down to three or two, it's your much easier to kill. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it, it died. But I, I had a good life, right? <laughs> right? Right. Oh, I need to play this, actually. Let's get this going. Because this is going to take a few turns. Um, so if I'm going to run the Vitality, I want to run it. We'll get it running now, basically. We are 10 points behind. But we have, you know, points per turn, ticking. And we have some big plays in hand. We can also target draw uh, our gnome. But we do want to make sure we have an elf, a dryad, and a dwarf. Which I think is, is pretty useful. And there's the three-point panther. And, you know, we were mulliganing those for a region. So, I would say it's a good play. Hmm. So, I kind of want to play this on the range row. But I don't really want to move any of my units. Although, it doesn't matter too much because... Peace with humans. I, I can move it back with the other dragoon. Although, I am playing into any kind of row effects. It does mean that my... Great Oak is going to be better, so you kind of have to weigh those up and decide what you think is going to be more of a problem, I suppose. Slow players, man. Not there you go. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to move something to the other row anyway, so maybe we'll make it look like we're going to row affect him. Potentially the wrong play, though, if he has a great oak, which he might do that is, you know, giving him more value out of it. So not exactly what we want to be doing. We are kind of behind in points, but we do have some big boy plays. So, you know, this is worth 15 if we hit the 6. This... So we damage enemy by the number of units. One, two, three, four. I guess we can do that. And end our turn. We are ten points behind. But we do have Barnabas. So we have access to Barnabas. And we have Sheldon. Which is going to give us currently 17 points. So it depends what her last card is and what her leader ability does really. We've also got Milva getting stronger every turn. 
You have one card, dear. Like, <laughs> there's not a lot of choice going on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. And not huge, not huge. But we are behind currently 20 points. We have 12 and 17. So we have... If this is worth more than 9, I think we lose. Oh, it's an order card. Seven. It was worth seven. Okay. Well, let's see how this works out. And we use our leader. We pull our good friend Barnabas. Plop him down. And actually... There you go. Look at that. Look at that. GG. Well played. So that was, I guess, what it's like in the mirror. I think her deck was more focused on dryads to a certain extent, whereas we don't use too many harmony units. I feel like the ones that we have, you know, do enough. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty close game. So GG well played. Let's jump into another game and play this deck once more. Kaudion Kenak Sensei. Okay, so here is our mulligans. We are against Bran, so the discard deck, which means we're going to see some damage. Uh, in terms of our hand, it looks it looks pretty good, actually. I would say Crushing Trap. Again, I tend to mulligan it just because I don't know how long the first round is going to be. We are going first, however, so, you know, again, it's, it's going to be kind of awkward to play it. Um, so let's mulligan that. This is fine. Are we going to need to move units to different rows? Maybe not, so I'm going to throw that one. Especially if we're not running Crushing Trap. And I think I'm going to leave the hand like that. I'm kind of happy with this hand. My turn. What is our opening play? So we could just get our... We could get our dryads on the board. Unfortunately, we have the agitator. But we don't actually have our good friend. Um, we have the agitator, but we don't have a good friend Sheldon. So it's slightly awkward. Uh, we could potentially play Saskia. You know, it depends on, on how worried we are about removal and stuff. Um, these guys are going to be three points. This is a five, but, you know, do we care more about them being removed or Saskia being removed? Probably Saskia, so let's just play this. Get ourselves some of these. We could boost one um, to protect it. You know, big removal's not super common, so it's maybe not bad, but he's still, he'd target one of them anyway, right? You know, if I boost one, he's just going to target the other one. So let's wait and see what he does. Like, unless he has maybe Gimpy. We should be fine. I will save. That was the perfect target. Oh, he's discarding things. He's discarding things and he's not hitting the Dryad Fledglings, which is very, very good for us. So, we can play this and boost unit in our hand. This is another Harmony unit. Uh, we can't necessarily boost Sheldon, but we could boost a Great Oak, which is still pretty good. So, I quite like this. And then end our turn. Unfortunately, this is, uh, you know, we have multiple dryads, so this is not unique, which means these aren't going to boost. So they only boost when you play something that is unique. This is okay. Like, he hasn't hit the fledglings, which do kind of the same thing. Um, so I think what we'll do here now is we'll go with, with Saskia. And she is unique, so you can see they get boosted there. Um, we could potentially use our tactical advantage if we want to protect this. Which I don't hate. But, you know, I always feel like you're making something tall with the tactical advantage. So the tactical advantage kind of plays against you a little bit. If they have something that, like, resets or removes a big unit, then you've kind of played into that. I see strong magic. Oh, what are the... Ch Come on! What is this? What is this luck? What is this luck? I'm sorry, but that was uh, a little bit of nonsense right there. A little bit of nonsense. Okay. So let's just do this and end our turn. Well, I mean, come on, what are the chances that Triss reveals a 12, you guys? <laughs> Never lucky. Never lucky, all of the baby rage. We can again, we can, we can always play this. It's not awful. You have an enemy bleeding for three turns. That's probably fine. I don't know what I want to play here, you know? It depends on what you, you feel like you, you want to spend. I don't mind spending this. 
I just like killing things. I don't want him to have like damaged units just in case he can utilize them in certain ways with his leader. Um, we've got another lock in hand, so I'm okay to play Moren, especially against Skellige, because Skellige doesn't have too many targets that you want to lock. Are all the trophies I need. So it's not, you know, hugely problematic. But we are kind of reaching a point now where um, it's a little bit awkward. Like, if I damage this with the leader, then he heals it. That's going to be kind of a problem. Put this guy in the range row. Coexistence, my and then we'll boost the dwarf. This guy only targets dwarfs, so we can't use him to boost the Great Oak. Would have liked to use him on Sheldon, but, you know, you're not always that lucky. Unfortunately. And the thing is, like, this guy, he only has reach one, which is kind of a problem, because it means if I shoot this guy, he's just going to get away. I think we'll just play Mel uh, Melan for now. Dimension enemy unit by four. And again, just I'm just trying to keep his board kind of clear, but we have spent a lot of gold, and it really feels like he hasn't spent too much comparatively, which is, you know, slightly problematic. We are ahead, though, and we, we could also look for an opportunity to pass, depending on, you know, how it is we want to play out this round. We are nine points ahead, which is, you know, a little bit tricky for him to catch. So, in terms of playing, we'll see. We will see. He's just banishing my cards. It doesn't really matter. So, this is this is where we have the choice. Do we pass or do we keep playing? This is going to give us uh, three, six, seven points, which isn't too bad get him down to one but then if he does heal that like i said that could be kind of awkward i think i'm gonna play Sky tail, attack! i quite like last say especially if i played something tall like the uh like the great oak and we'll see we'll see and i think because that was the only dwarf i believe the dried fledging boosted Made ends here. Came and wiped it away. lock self berserk destroy self so i think this is the pass right he's we're six points up do we really want to play kieran here it's five points you know we could really force him out of the round but i, I think like he's gonna have to play a seven to catch us it depends how much he wants last play i do think i want to keep a look i'm not 100 percent sure on everything skellige has up their sleeves now um so we will see if we can damage him to below half health i think yeah then he kills himself which is kind of interesting the question is do we play this no i think this is i think this is the pass because we're going first i think i'm not comfortable continuing to push out this round given the the kind of state of the board i think this is where we we pass and if we can get a, a thousand thunder and sea devils! big play out of him not bad and there you go one point ahead Kyalmar though pretty big Kyalmar is a pretty big spend so I'm okay with that I expect we'll see probably a dry pass here I think it's pretty likely there's Sheldon now he comes out to play smell like in this I mean I need something to play this round so I think we're gonna hold on to the we'll hold on to the dwarf because assuming we see the pass which we do then I just want to play this Never had your um, and if I mulliganed into, you know, another gold, that would be maybe a little bit tricky. So we can target draw something from our deck. Usually that's going to be Barnabas if we have, you know, a dwarf, a dryad, and an elf, which we... I don't know if we have a dryad, actually. I'm going to get rid of dryad's caress, I think. We can thin these. Oh, it's a risk. Oh, it's a risk. <laughs> well, it's the same card. So there you go. So let's put this on the range row. Wake up, Boost Sheldon. Humans End our turn. After our lady the other boat. thing we could have played there is we could play Trent Boar. But I, I think first I want to get these um, dwarfs on the board and get them thinned. The other thing is he's got this discard and his discard deals damage. So if we expect him to be dealing damage with discards, then that is something we have to be a little bit careful of. Okay, so he's got a totem. When he orders this, it will damage an adjacent by two, which are these guys. They will then transform into five point bear abominations that's probably fine we could move them you know i don't hate that uh it makes the dragoon a little bit better Onward, so just kind of deny him the transformation ha, let us put our steel to the test he killed my dwarf that's annoying it means we're gonna have a bit of a trickier time um, we're gonna have a bit of a trickier time thinning certain things, but, you know, you take that risk. 
This goes on the range row. And we end our turn. So we don't have a Dryad, which means that maybe it's better to pull something different, but I still think you're probably better to pull Barnabas, even if he's only worth 10. And we're about to get shot to pieces. Here it comes. That's a good target. We can lock this. We'll lock this on the next turn. Assuming it doesn't uh, kill me, which it didn't, so yay. Um, just in case he has ways to discard special cards, I think it's not a bad target for locking. So we'll move this. We'll shoot this. We'll play this. We'll lock this, and then we'll end our turn. We have removal, like we have five points of removal with Sheldon's gags. So, you know, we're not in an awful spot, but we're not in the best spot. We are down 10 points and a card, but we do have a card, extra card from Dana. So, you know, he's played his leader at least. This is going to give us probably 10. So if we include our leader with the 10, we're actually not down at all. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. Oh, come on. What are these tall? He's got on the 10 and he's going to boost something by 10. Damn, I am super, super unimpressed. So he's healed back up. I think we have to play Sheldon before we can play this, right? So... Let's do that. It's kind of a big play. I mean, we have an elf and a dwarf, so it's probably actually worth playing this now. Just while they're both on the board. No Dryad, unfortunately. So we're only going to see... 10 points but now we're on even points so, and uneven no cards that is a basement? big uter huh. so let's get our our dwarves out <laughs> Leave it to move us. this attack this this is still worth 16 plus 2 18 <laughs> so we're not in an awful spot and we can make this kill itself right so let's move this back oh actually we're not damaging but never mind um, so I only need to deal, how much damage do I need to deal? Half. Half or less. So like if we, if we do four damage, one, two, three, four. So we should put this here. This should then kill itself. Yep, there we go. And is his last card worth more than eight points? Summon a warrior from your graveyard. Uh, I think it is. Unfortunately for us, he's replaying the Hjalmar. Huh, did he not have anything to banish? I'm so confused what happened there. He pulled Hjalmar. He must not have had anything to banish, I guess. I don't know, but we won, so <laughs> I'm super confused. <laughs> I am super confused, but you know, it's all good. We'll send our GG. We somehow won that bizarre game. I'm not really sure what happened. If anyone knows what happened, then do let me know. But we are on a win streak. We're gonna rank up uh, or get close to ranking up, which is pretty good. Oh, you need three to be on a win streak, whatever, whatever. But either way, Either way, that is the Harmony deck. It's a lot of fun. It's a very interesting deck. Uh, it was made by Shimmery, so do check him out. He is a super knowledgeable Gwent player. He's the analyst at uh, Challenger events and all around, just a chill guy. So do check out his you know channel, stream, whatever. Um, if you like the video, leave a like. There should be a link to Fan Fridays. I do want to bring Fan Fridays back. So if you have a deck you want me to play, you can always submit them there. Um, and yeah, if you want to see any specific decks, let me know in the comments. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will catch you guys in the next video. You can find me on Twitch at Jagras and Twitter at Jagras. Bye!